I got a late night message from a new government employee. He said he was quitting. He couldn't do it anymore and he was tired of trying. The message was emotional, but I wasn't surprised at all. In fact, I told him this would probably happen. This guy's in his mid thirties, spent about 10 years in retail management. He first called me last year. He wanted to get a government job in finance. He told me his whole situation and we looked at either 0501, which is financial specialist, or 0560, which is budget analyst. I could tell by looking at the experience on his resume, this wasn't going to be that difficult. But then I asked him the question I asked everybody, what are your salary expectations? How much do you need to earn? He had been making $75,000 a year. So he said as long as he's making that or around there, he would be happy. That means he would need to come in as a GS 11 at the minimum. Some people have a difficult time trying to determine what GS grade or what salary should be acceptable for them. And one of the baseline things I always say is look at how much you were earning previously. That should be a minimum. You shouldn't have to take a salary cut. Part of your government job search strategy needs to include a GS grade range. So then I helped him with his resume, made sure everything on there, all the achievements were speaking to the 0500 job series and also to the job announcements he was applying to. Because if you're not changing the language, if your resume does not appear relevant to what you're applying to, you're just gonna waste your time. You're gonna accumulate a lot of rejections. If you are currently looking for a federal government job and you're interested in attending federal virtual hiring events where you could potentially meet someone that works in human resources. You can meet a hiring manager. I will send you out a list every week of all the federal hiring events that are occurring virtually. So you can attend it anywhere on your couch, in your bed, doesn't matter. If you want me to email that to you, sign up to the free newsletter down below. Okay, so the plan with this guy was to apply in Tampa and Orlando, those two main cities in the GS11 GS 12 grade range, also looking at the 0500 job series, right? Do that daily. And he did that several weeks go by and he lets me know, Hey, I got an interview. Hey, I got a job offer. I just accepted a job offer with the department of defense. And I was like, great. That's amazing. Congratulations. Where's the position located? And then he told me it was in Oahu, Hawaii. I don't know if you've ever been to Hawaii, if you know about Hawaii, but the cost of living is crazy high. It is extremely expensive to buy just about anything in Hawaii because they export everything. So a GS 11 is probably not going to make it unless they have some sort of family support system, unless they have some sort of friends they can stay with. If you're just relying on GS 11 salary, it's going to be difficult, near impossible to do. The average rent for a one bedroom apartment in Hawaii is around $2,000 a month. And it could look something like this at under 800 square feet. But like I said, it's not just the rent. You wanna go buy breakfast cereal? You wanna go to the restaurant and have yourself a nice lunch? That will cost so much more than if you're in a regular town in Florida, or if you're living in the Midwest or pretty much anywhere in the mainland, except for California. So I told him, hey, listen, you gotta consider this. This is gonna be a lot. You're gonna be put in a situation where you're gonna be under a lot of financial pressure you probably shouldn't take it. And he said, well, you know, it's been my dream, which was odd because it never came up in our conversations about Hawaii. It was always Florida, but apparently it was his dream to live in Hawaii. He could already picture the sandy beaches, the warm waters, the perfect weather, nothing that I could say would change his mind. So I asked him, well, did you at least negotiate your salary, negotiate the step level? And he was like, no, I was so excited. I just accepted the offer. So he's coming in as a GS 11 step one. Now, if he could negotiate his offer from step one to step 10 for GS 11, that's like a $25,000 a year difference. He left probably close to 10 to 15 to $20,000 on the table. He left it on the table. Then he paid close to $3,000 to ship his car. He was eating into his savings. By the time that he put first and last month's rent down on an apartment, he barely had any savings left. And then he started to get his paychecks. After about three, three and a half months, he realized it's not feasible. I cannot do this any longer. So he ended up quitting that job and coming back to Florida. 
Now, there's nothing wrong with quitting a government job. You can quit and apply and reapply and apply as much as you like. Some people have this idea that there's a blacklist, that if you accept a job and then quit after a week or a month or a few months, that you're going to be placed on some sort of list. That doesn't exist. You can apply for as many government jobs as much as you would like. But I am telling you, you have to check the living expense of the area that you're moving to, that you're accepting the job in. Now, obviously, this doesn't matter if you're accepting a local job. If you know the city, if you know the state, then by all means, just go ahead and accept the job if you know you can make it with the money. But if you don't know, if you're moving to, let's say, Washington, D.C. from rural Mississippi, that's going to be a shock. That will be a huge price shock in the difference. Same thing with San Francisco or Los Angeles. You can do these side-by-side -side comparisons on websites like Numbo. I'm comparing Hawaii and DC here, and you can see that the rent is less expensive in Hawaii, but the groceries are a lot more expensive. You can compare all kinds of different things to get a good idea of the difference. So make sure that you are studying the area and at least try to negotiate your step level. Do it one time, and if the agency says no, that's fine. And in addition to studying it with the website, looking online, you can reach out to people that live in that area, government employees that are already there. You know, maybe have a conversation with them and ask them, is a GS-11 enough? Is a GS-12 going to be sufficient in Germany? Or whatever the case is. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a similar situation where you're accepting a job and then a few months later, you're forced to quit. Now, if you're still looking for a federal government job, I did a live stream recently and answered over a dozen questions on the federal hiring process, on usajobs.gov, on different government jobs. If you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.